I'm John Turley-Yurt, and welcome to FP Executive. I'm joined today by Pat Horgan from IBM, Vice President of Operations. Thank you, Pat, for joining us. My pleasure. Today we're talking about smart cities and a particular aspect of, of smart cities, although I don't know how smart we are in terms of transportation, and that's the issue we're going to dive into. Uh, we've uh, been debating transportation for years now, right. uh, public transportation, personal transportation in terms of cars, transportation for business. A lot of people in, in municipal governments across this country and indeed the world are looking at better ways to move people around, and a lot of citizens are thinking there's got to be a better way to move people around when they're sitting in traffic for a long period of time. What are some of the, what are some of the drivers for, for, for folks who are trying to find change? I know cost must be part of it. Yeah, absolutely, John. Actually, there's a couple of things that uh, we found when we were looking at this problem. We surveyed Canadians because we wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that this was truly a Canadian problem. We thought it was. <laughs> and actually, late last year, Angus Reid did a poll of Canadians across the country. And although we're pretty proud of a lot of the services we have, mm -hmm. we all, 90% of us, compared to 10 years ago, see that things have gotten a little bit worse. And it's this mass urbanization point okay. of Canadians kind of realizing that you know, now 50% of people around the world are in urban cities and, mm -hmm. and this transportation points there, mm -hmm. and that it's getting worse. It's going to turn uh, more towards 70% of people around the world being in urban centers. Mm -hmm. Canadians have a sense for that. And the second point, to your point on transportation, when we asked the question, we did a commuter pain survey, we decided we'd go a little bit deeper and say, well, what are people around the world and Canadians thinking about that? Uh -huh. And over 50% of Canadians said, yeah, this, this is a bigger problem than it was three years ago. Our commute time is not as bad as some places like Beijing. Right. However, in Toronto, Montreal, and other urban centers in Canada, mm -hmm. it's gotten worse over the last three years. So this is a problem we kind of want to address and want to try to play a role. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a, it crosses a lot of different parts, right? So even to your question, mm -hmm. governments, businesses, educational institutions all have mm -hmm. to play a bit of a part to solve this. And it's not a simple answer. To, it's not one thing that fits mm -hmm. that will solve this. Mm -hmm. We find that our concentration on these smarter cities, it's a, it's a bunch of systems that interrelate. Okay. And if we can do something to help, mm -hmm. especially in this area of transportation, then we mm -hmm. can really help a lot of different people at the same time. You mentioned com commuter pain, and I, I think a lo that's, that's a, a wonderful term uh, because I think we've all experienced that. Uh, can you give us some examples? I think maybe Singapore, for example, has, has been doing some work in the area of trying to relieve commuter pain. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. And in fact, that's exactly what they did. They saw this problem and they said, we've got to do something about it. And in mm -hmm. fact, they, their land transportation agency kind of took a look. Okay. And they teamed up with us and they said, you know what, it's, there's a bunch of data here. We're not taking advantage of looking at it and analyzing it. Mm -hmm. and so what they did is they actually looked at different streams of data that show traffic flows. Right. They synced it up with their, I think they have 1,700 traffic lights in okay. Singapore. And if you look at patterns, and you actually mm -hmm. look ahead at patterns, you can see that within really high accuracy rates, way over 90%, mm -hmm. that you can actually predict when there's going to be a traffic jam. And in fact, uh, it's not that big a deal. It's not like you have to change traffic lights all green forever. In fact, mm -hmm. it's only like within, within about five-second change. You can actually take a traffic jam mm -hmm. and smooth it out. Interesting. And now they've discovered, and they're working extensively with us to apply right. to other areas of their city, but they see that this has really helped them in terms of traffic flow. Wow. So I, I'm interested. This sounds like a huge system. Is it very expensive to put something like this together? It takes more of this effort across the different disciplines of Singapore. Now, Singapore is a, is a you know, one yeah. big area, and so uh -huh. they were able to get together perhaps uh, mm -hmm. to think about this. But it, it took data from different segments of their traffic and other pieces mm -hmm. of their information system and then analyze it to find out where the model is, where you can improve it and make mm -hmm. it best. So in terms of cost, so that we're not talking about multi-billion dollar... No, you know, not at all. This in is fact, this is almost data that exists that is, wasn't being used before mm -hmm. that's now being mined with our help to allow wow. them to kind of maximize this. Well, you, you, you mentioned an interesting point. This is data that maybe a lot of cities are collecting, but right. they're just not utilizing it effectively for, that's right. for, for transportation. And in fact, I, another example, which I like to... Coming away from cars, because it sounds like we're all going to yeah. look at sensors <laughs> in cars and point at cars... London, England actually has taken mm -hmm. a shot at this as well. And they had looked at it for transit. So one of the things to help people with their car traffic is to get people using transit more. I see. And what they did was they actually looked at patterns of people. And okay. they looked at what people wanted mm -hmm. and what they were doing, what their issues were with the transit system. Mm -hmm. And they actually did some steps on scheduling and watching people movement. 
similar to Singapore, but now with people, uh-huh. and they increase their uh, confidence, if you will, and comfort level with taking transit by 40%. Their ridership w- went way up, and it really has helped their traffic patterns in London, England, doing that. So this sounds like it's a, it's a matter of stepping back and looking at the data and then uh, applying it intelligently so that you can actually you know, find some way to reduce traffic jams or to get more people on public transit. Right. Exactly right. And that's what a smarter city is all about. Interesting. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, logistics in our next segment, and, and particularly how we get goods into urban areas where people are moving into, which I think is another complex issue. Pat, thanks again for joining us for this first part. My pleasure, John. Thank, Thank you. you.